العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على محمد رسول الله سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين والشافع المشفع يوم الدين وعلى آله الطيبين وأزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وصحابته الغر الميامين ومن استن بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Hayyakum Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, to this uh, session of Kashf uh, al-Shubuhat. Imam Muhammad Abdul Rahab, rahimahullah uh, ta'ala, said, uh, He said, after mentioning the uh, what these uh, uh, these uh, people uh, who who worship the the um, the um, uh, awliya in their graves fear the great the greatest fear of of them uh, is committing major shirk. And also, as what he said that they, you, you, you come to know that uh, the person of Tawheed, even the very simple uh, person of knowledge of Tawheed will uh, defeat all these all these uh, people of of shirk and uh, and that's why uh, that's why he said so then you fear will greatly increase and your eagerness upon that which will save you from this from this and what is similar to it and what is similar to it what is that let us refresh go back again to refresh uh, our memory of what he said in the last session he said uh, then you will have uh, acquired two benefits the first a uh, great joy at bounty at the bounty of Allah and his mercy just as he the most high said say in the bounty of Allah قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون say in the bounty of Allah and in his mercy then let them rejoin in that that is better than the wealth they amass. Then he said, and you will uh, also leave, uh, and you will also have taken the second benefit. What is that? That of the uh, of al khawful azim, the tremendous fear. For if you have come to know that a person can commit cover by a word which he uh, emits from his tongue. He says this word whilst being ignorant. Then he is not excused because of ignorance. And sometimes he may say it thinking that it is drawing him close to Allah. The most high, just as the mushrikeen used to believe 
especially if Allah the Most High has inspired you to understand what he uh, narrated about the Qawm of Musa, the people of Musa, who despite their righteousness and their knowledge came to him, Musa السلام, saying, make an ilah for us. Make an ilah, uh, object of worship for us, just as they have aliha, uh, objects of worship. There you come to know the, the truth and reality. So then you fear, uh, so then your fear will greatly increase. Fear of what? Fear of falling into shirk, whilst you don't know, whilst you don't know. So he said, so then your fear will, will, will greatly increase and your eagerness upon that which, which will have, which will save you from this and what is similar to it. Then he said, and know that he uh, free from all imperfections from his wisdom did not send a prophet with this tawheed except that he set up enemies for him just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high stated as uh, as in the ayah in surah al-ali imran ayah 100 and uh, 12 uh, what Allah Ta'ala says and likewise uh, in, the, in the translation of the interpretation and likewise did we appoint uh, for every prophet enemies uh, وَلَقَدْ جَعَنَّا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ عَدُوًّا مِنَ Sorry. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنْسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ زُخْرُ فِي الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا As in uh, Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 112. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already uh, clarified to us that there are enemies who are uh, accusing the messengers and those inheritors of the messengers those callers to Allah upon knowledge upon uh, wisdom they these shayateen of jinn and mankind as Allah Ta'ala said and likewise did we appoint for every prophet enemies, shayateen, devils from the men and jinn and inspiring one another with a beautified speech as a delusion or by a way of deception. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already clarified that to us. Then he said, the Imam said, and the enemies of Tawheed may sometimes have many types of knowledge, books, and arguments, uh, just as he, the Most High, stated, as uh, in ayah number 83 of Surah Ghafir, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said, uh, 
فلما جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات فرحوا بما عندهم من العلم وحاق بهم ما كانوا به يستهزئون so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so when there come to them their messengers with the clear proofs they those who denied their messengers rejoice, uh, rejoiced in the knowledge that they had yani from the previous uh, prophets and messengers with their own selves so they they have knowledge don't think that you are going to debate with people who don't have knowledge because they are calling to misguidance you think that they have no knowledge no they have knowledge but very unfortunately they willingly are acting against that knowledge they are acting practicing calling teaching against that knowledge that they have why because here in the heart there is something not proper there is something not uh, about sincerity the heart is not about sincerity with allah the almighty then the imam said so when you have come to know of all this and you have come to know that which the path to allah the most high will uh will inevitably uh have enemies because they are uh inevitable they can't you can't see them they are shayateen on the way uh enemies laying in wait upon it upon that straight path what is the straight path straight path is tawhid is the sunnah is performance of prayers performance of fasting performance of hajj of zakah performance of uh, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil performance of seeking knowledge uh, yani performance of good manners and uh, trust and etc et these are the things that the shayateen play around trying to extract the believer from there and make him either ignore or act uh, proudly and uh, ignorantly <clears throat> showing off that is the field where the shayateen work massively and uh, strongly and hardly uh, to divert the believer from that straight path so that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear for the believers not to trust them but to trust allah not to rely upon them but to rely upon allah and even not to rely upon your own self or own knowledge but rely upon allah as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the messenger from allah who received the revelation but he used to rely upon allah and ask allah to keep him up on the right path he used to ask allah on the in in, in the in the uh, in the sujood uh, and in the opening subligation of the night prayers and every time he used to ask allah to protect him from what these people are trying to divert uh, the believers to that is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so what about us what about us we uh, yani need to do harder work than that we need to do harder work than that we need to uh, beautify our aqida by learning the tawhid and giving it uh, so much of our time so much of our time must be given to learning the aqida the tawhid of allah and then we also uh, give uh, so much time in learning the sharia of allah the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how to perform the worships and 
Thirdly, we need to now struggle. And, and the means to help for that is the optional uh, performance of prayers, optional performance of fasting, pro optional performance of charity uh, contribution, optional performance of uh, Hajj and Umrah, and many others. And from the top of these is, uh, is reading the biography of the pious brothers and sisters. This helps a lot to stable, steadfast on the, on the, on the uh, right path. And also to visit the graves. As the Prophet ﷺ said, it reminds you the akhirah, the after you're in, so that you not be de de deceived. Maybe you are already deceived, but when you do these things, Allah Ta'ala uh, put lights, put light in your vision so you can clearly see your uh, straight path from the, uh, from the fabricated and falsely and, and false paths. So you stay away from these false paths and keep yourself on that straight path. As the Prophet ﷺ used to say in his sujood, Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh, you who turn the hearts stable, uh, uh, make my heart established on your religion. So these are things that uh, help on that, seeking knowledge of aqeedah. Many people today are so deeply involved in seeking knowledge of manners, of uh, fiqh, but they are very poor in aqeedah. And that's why most of the Muslims have big corruption in the issue of aqeedah. And as a consequence, they have many uh, differences in how to perform the ibadat because they did not have uh, yani, the, the proper understanding of aqeedah. How can they have the proper understanding of fiqh? That is the, 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 the problem. If you cannot have the, the foundation uh, rightly, then you can't have the uh, yani other uh, the other things rightly. So we have to uh, ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then the Imam said, "So when you have come to know that uh, to know all of this, and you have come to know that the path to Allah Most High will uh, inevitably have enemies." Laying in wait upon uh, upon it, people, uh, eloquence, knowledge, people of eloquence, knowledge, and proofs. Then, when you know that, then it is obligatory for you to learn more the religion of Allah. What is the religion of Allah? Main thing, Tawheed, the Aqeedah, that is the main thing. When you look to all the messengers that Allah sent, Allah has sent 124,000 uh, prophets and messengers. What for? Only to call people to Tawheed. That is the main thing. Why did Allah Ta'ala punish all those people? It's not because they... Uh, deferred in the in the in the fiqh issues now many people think that allah destroyed qawm lut because of the homosexuality la akhi homosexuality came second but main thing that they denied their prophet they denied tawhid they continued on worshiping uh, either their desires or uh, idols and other uh, things People of Nuh, people of uh, Shu'aib, many people think that the people of Shu'aib were punished because they were uh, cheating in way. La akhi. They were destroyed because they denied the call to Tawheed that their messengers came with. Then uh, what they did on top was uh, a support to be punished. But my brothers and sisters, 
main thing that Allah Ta'ala does not forgive, the only thing that Allah Ta'ala does not forgive is shirk, is to fail in performance of Tawheed, the right of Allah. That's why we need to focus on that and give much of our time to learn the Tawheed. Such this book, Kashf al-Shubuhat, Removal of Doubts from the understanding and the uh, belief of uh, Muslims. Because the, the, the belief of the people of Quraysh at the time of Rasulullah those who Rasulullah fought them, is exactly the same as the belief of many Muslims today, who, and maybe even the Muslims, to, many Muslims today, are even even more worse than what those Quraysh people had uh, or were upon. Why? Because these people read the Quran and they believe in the Quran, but yet they oppose the Quran. The Quran says in Surah Al-Fatiha, You only we worship, you only we seek help from. But once they finish their prayer, in the same masjid there is a shrine of what's so-called wali. If he is wali, why is uh, buried there and why there is a shrine and why people come there and yani, subligate and do all these worships? That is incorrect, completely incorrect. Yani, we need to understand uh, our religion. When we say, we need to understand it. We need to know what it means, not just to repeat it like uh, parrots, that is incorrect, my brothers and sisters. And uh, he said, then it is obligatory for you to, le to, to learn from the religion of Allah that which will become w a weapon for you with which you fight these shayateen. Those uh, whose leader and uh, spokesman said uh, to your Lord, uh, the mighty and majestic, meaning when 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 the shaitan uh, said what he said um, uh, in 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 uh, yani said what he said to Allah, said what he said to Allah, as in Surah Al-Araf, ayah sixteen and seventeen, he said, "La qudan lahum siratak al-mustaqim, thumma la atiyna min bain aydihim." ومن خلفهم وعن أيمانهم وعن شمائلهم ثم لا تجد أكثرهم شاكرين. هي الله تعالى said that the shaitan said to his lord to Allah, I will surely sit in wait for them on your straight path. Look at that. Where on your straight path? It is not the path of the Christians, the Jews, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the uh, whatever other religions, it is not the path of the Shia, it is not the path of the Sufis or La, it is the, the path of followers of Rasulullah, first of all, in Aqidah. In Aqidah. So he is going to come to those who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And first thing he wants to divert them from is the Aqidah, the belief, the, truth, the faith. So there he will come. As he came to the people of Nuh and he convinced them that these five uh, pious people who used to worship Allah uh, in, in, in the past, these are gods. He convinced them. And because they did not used to learn Tawheed and they may be focused on, uh, on, on yani, manners and like example, sorry to give examples, but I have to be Frank with you and give you the truth. Today, for example, Jama'at uh, Tabligh, those people of Tabligh, um, these people, or, or what's so called Jama'at Dawah, they are very ignorant of Tawheed. They don't study Tawheed, they don't learn it. So that's why easily the shaitan yani, deceive them and make them do the bid'ah. Why? Because they don't have protection from the shaitan. They did not sit in the classes of Tawheed. They think that sitting in classes is wasting time. Sitting in circles of knowledge of, with the ulama 
as waste uh, of time. So that's why the shaitan was, so the shaitan succeeded in the first uh, try when he told them and convinced them, don't go to the people of knowledge. Don't sit uh, in circles of knowledge. He said to them, if you seek knowledge and you may not act upon it, then you are going to be thrown in the fire as first one. As in the hadith, authentic hadith. But why would you believe that? Okay, you did not used to practice or maybe you were not Muslim and, and, and you came to Islam or to practicing. Why didn't you say that if I go to Islam, I will, this is knowledge. This is knowledge. When you left what you were up on and came to Islam or you were not practicing and now you came to practicing, this is, uh, this is a, a use of what you newly known or uh, knew. So you knew this and you implemented. Good. Why didn't you consider that this uh, knowledge and implementation uh, can make you go to fire? Because this is not the situation, not the case. The more knowledge you gain, the more light you uh, also gain. You are given by Allah. So my brothers and sisters, seek knowledge. Don't let the shayateen deceive you. Don't let them convince you that uh, yani, this will, 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 will make you among those who will be thrown first to the fire. This is completely incorrect. Then, then uh, yani, uh, Imam Muhammad Abdul Rahab said, uh, after he brought this ayah, uh, the ayah, um, Surah Al-Arab, Ayah 16 and 17, uh, he then said, however, when you turn to Allah and pay close attention to his proofs and his clarifications, then do not fear nor be sad. Yes, do not fear nor be sad. When you come to uh, when you come towards Allah, when you come to obey Allah, worship Allah, how come you fear? How come you be sad? Allah Ta'ala said, as in Surah uh, Al-A'raf, uh, no, uh, Allah Ta'ala said, as, as, as in, in uh, first of all, this is all a deception from the shaitan, trying to convince you so that you leave what you were, uh, yani, what you started doing of practicing, of seeking knowledge. And that is from, and that is from the deception of the shaitan, my brothers and sisters, be careful, be careful as, uh, as Allah Ta'ala said about their uh, plot and their plans, Allah Ta'ala said as in, uh, in Surah An-Nisa, uh, Ayah 76, uh, indeed the plot of the shay of shayateen is ever weak. What does that mean? It is weak for those who seek the truth. It is weak. Those who are sincere, those who are honest, those who refer back to Allah, rely upon Allah, ask Allah constantly. It's impossible that you ask Allah guidance and Allah let you uh, go astray. That's impossible. That is not possible to happen, Ya Ikhwan. We have to understand this very, very well. If you keep asking, why? Think of it. Why did Allah make it mandatory upon every single Muslim when he prays whatever prayer, whether uh, the five obligatory prayers or the optional prayers, whether the rawati before and after obligatory prayers, whether the duha, the night prayer, any general optional prayer, whether janazah prayer, you have to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. 
You have to. If you don't, then your salah is incorrect. Is not correct. Why? Because this surah, Surah Al-Fatiha, includes very, very important things, meanings. Surah Al-Fatiha, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that it is a Quran al azim All the meanings of Quran are gathered in that uh, small surah, seven ayat. Uh, from these things is uh, the, the, the promise to uh, single out Allah in, in your worships. As Allah Ta'ala said, when you say that, do you realize what you say? Or you just uh, repeat something you don't understand? You have to understand, my brothers and sisters. You cannot just repeat something you don't know, something that you don't understand. This is improper. You have to understand what you recite, what you say. You have to understand it. And Allah Ta'ala here is saying, Only you. Oh Allah, we worship. Those who go to the graves of awliya, are they really worshiping only Allah? It's a lie. It's a lie. You are saying to Allah, only you we seek help from. But whenever you need a baby, whenever you need money, whenever you are sick, whenever you want uh, yani, uh your son or child passes the exam, you always go to the wali in the grave. How come you then say that I am a, a, a true slave of Allah? No, you are not. You did not understand. This is a clear promise. Wallahi ya ikhwan, any simple person who knows Arabic even if he is not Muslim, will understand what these two words mean, two statements mean. It means I'm not going to turn to anybody, even uh, Rasulullah Muhammad I'm not going to go and ask him. I will only ask you. I will only ask you. When you say to Allah, only you I seek help with or from. So how come this يعني, go along with what you do when you are in need, you go to the grave of the awliya. Where is your promise? And there, uh, Allah Ta'ala also stated in Surah Al-Fatiha, al-mustaqim. This you ask Allah to guide you to the straight path. Think of it. Minimum, if you don't do any optional prayers, if you don't do any janaza prayers, if you don't do any any other prayers, but only the five prayers a day. This is 17 times, 17 times of promise and 17 times of seeking for guidance. Do you think that Allah, when you knock his door 17 times a day, he does not accept you? If you are honest, sincere, but if you knock the door and you are not honest and you are not sincere, this door is not uh, to be opened for you. You are not uh, the right person to uh, be let in. That door opens only for those sincere and honest when they say. And that's why on the conditions of la ilaha illallah is honesty and sincerity. You cannot say al mustaqim, and once you finish the salah, you go to the grave. Ya wali, ya wali, I need ya wali. What is that? Where is your request to Allah to guide you? And now you yourself led yourself to misguidance. How come? You promise him only you I worship, only you I seek help from, and then after salah you go to the grave. You worship the buried. Uh, body there if there is anybody buried there and you uh, seek help from so what is that what is that if you don't have the sincerity and honesty in what you say in your salah then that would never benefit you would never benefit you and then Imam Muhammad Abdul Rahab said and the uh, Ammi 
from the Muwahideen, people of Tawheed, the Ami is the Lehman person, one who is very simple. He does not yani, seek much knowledge, but he is Muwahid. He understands the Tawheed. He understands the Tawheed. Uh, this person will overcome a thousand of the scholars of Mushrikeen. Why? Why? Can anybody please tell me why? I will not wait for you to tell me why. I will tell you why. Because this Ami, definitely he knows Surah Al-Fatiha. Wallahi, if you understand Surah Al-Fatiha well, you will defeat all these great scholars with big turbans over their heads. Their knowledge is all of mankind. It's all man-made. But what you know of Surah Al-Fatiha is a revelation from Allah. If you understand what it means, my brothers and sisters, if I promise you and I say, I will only give this water bottle to you. And then I go and give it to someone else. Did I fulfill my promise to you? How are you going to look to me? How are you going to look to me? If I say to you, you alone, I am going to seek help from. And in a fraction of a minute or second, I go to so-and-so and I say, please help me. I didn't find anybody to help me. Help me, please. You're going to look at me and say, hey, you, are you stupid? Are you fool? Are you mad? Didn't you just told me? Didn't you just tell me that you will only ask me, why did you go to him? That is between you and I. We are creation. So how come? And Allah has the uh, most high example. How come you promise Allah 17 times a day minimum? And then you go and break your promise. And you still think that Allah will guide you. Allah will help you. Allah will support you. It's impossible. I'm telling you, it is impossible. Maybe it happens from some who are miskin, very, very lemon, very uneducated in, 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 in Sharia and in Aqidah. And they think their own people and their own ulama are right. So they're doing what, but yeah, Ikhwan, there are things. Yeah, Ikhwan. Now, when, 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 yani, subhanallah. I was, I was one day in, in Sri Lanka, and I was in Nepal, uh, and, and subhanAllah, I saw, I saw Ahlul Bid'ah from those who say that they are Muslims. They have a shrine of a, a, a so-called wali, and they go to it. Next to them is the temple of the Hindus, and they have their uh, statues, the uh, idol. And they, these Muslims, they say that those people are kuffar. Why? Because they are worshiping Krishna. The Buddhists are kuffar because they are worshiping the uh, Buddha. And there is, and there is a church there. All oh, those Christians are kuffar because they are worshiping Jesus. And what about you? What about you? Who excluded you? You're doing the same thing. You're worshiping Maulana so-and-so, Maulana so-and-so. You're saying the same things. You are asking the, exactly like how they are asking. No difference between you and them, my brother. No difference at all. The only thing is that you say, uh, yani, that you are Muslim and you call the Adan and you have a masjid, not a temple, not a church. And you have the Quran, which is a proof against you. And you say, I bear witness that there is no God, no true God, but Allah. And then you go to another God. And you say, not like them. They don't say. They don't say. But you say, And then you go and break it in a, a minute time. You go and break it. After you finish the salah, like you say, Oh God, I joke with you. I'm going to the true one who can give me. Maulana, so and so in his grave. That's just kidding. This is, this is, ya ikhwan, we have to be careful. 
We have to be careful. No one can know when he dies. Maybe you die in a fraction of a second. No one will help you on the day of resurrection. Allah Ta'ala said, Umadi Dhalimina Min Nasir. So you have to be careful, my brothers and sisters. Don't let these people yani, fool you and deceive you. Be careful, my brothers and sisters. Then the Imam said, uh, nah, just as Allah the Most High says, as in the ayah, uh, as in the ayah number uh, 37, or sorry, ayah number 173, of Surah uh, uh, Safat, Allah Ta'ala said there, uh, as in, 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 in Surah Safat, Allah Ta'ala said, um, وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمْ الْغَالِبُونَ لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ And and uh, indeed, and that indeed our soldiers will be victorious ones. Who these soldiers are? Those who perform Tawheed correctly and completely. Those are the soldiers of Allah. Soldiers of Allah are not the ones who uh, worship the graves. These are not soldiers of Allah. No, no. Soldiers of Allah are those who fulfill the Tawheed, the right of Allah. As the Prophet Sallallahu said to Mu'ad, Atadri ma haqqu Allahi ala al-ibad wa ma haqqu al-ibad ala Allah. Do you know what is the right of Allah upon the slaves and what, are, what is the right of the slaves upon Allah? He told him the right of Allah is to single him out in worship. Now going to the grave, is it worship or not? Asking the death body there is it worship or not if you say not then you don't understand what is worship you need to go and learn the turban does not make you a alim you have to learn my brothers and sisters we have to be careful then the imam said so the jund of allah the soldiers of allah are the victorious ones by way of the evidence and the tongue just as they are victorious by way of the word uh, the sword and the the, sp the spear as they are the victorious when they <coughs> face enemies in the in the battle and fight with the sword and the spear allah gave them the victory or not like in badr allah gave them the victory and Al-Ahzab, and Hunayn, Allah gave them victory. In Badr, Allah sent the angels to fight with them. Because they had this one correct. And the understanding correct upon what Allah Ta'ala wanted. That's what we need today. My brothers and sisters, when 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 the people came, when some of the new Muslims came to Rasulullah and they said, "Masha Allah wa shaita ya Rasulullah," what Allah wills and what you will, the Prophet Sallallahu shaked and was and turned very angry, and he said, "Have you made, put me in an equivalent level of Allah? Subhanallah, you make me equal to Allah." Say what Allah alone wills. That is in his lifetime. Where, when he used to, yani, he was alive, he can't do something. But when he died, he can't do anything. Those who were with him and when, he wa when he was alive, they did not ask him what these people asking him when he died. And, not, and, and, and they are asking even others like awliya, as they call them. That's wrong, my brothers and sisters. That's wrong. Then, uh, he, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, um, 
sorry. He said, the fear is only with regard to the uh, person of Tawheed, the fear with him, uh, who uh, proceeds along uh, the path with no weapon. Here is the fear. When you come, you are muhid, okay, I understand. But you don't have the weapon. How come you are going to fight? Your enemy, the shaitan, your enemy is those uh, deviants who try to deceive the people by knowledge. And you don't have knowledge. You don't have knowledge. How you are going to refute them? By raising your voice? By screaming? By crying? By boxing? La, akhi, this is not the way. You have to seek knowledge. And I mean knowledge of Aqeedah and Tawheed. Tawheed and Aqeedah. You have to seek the knowledge and be patient with that. Many people, they always come and say, yeah, Sheikh, we want to learn about fiqh, about uh, this. Akhi, did you learn about Aqeedah? Rasulullah Sallallahu when he sent Mu'ad to Yemen, he said to him, call them to uh, La ilaha illallah, that is the Tawheed, that is the Aqeedah. Up until they agree, meaning they understand it. And he said to him, if they don't agree with you on that, don't move, don't teach them Salah, don't teach them fasting, don't teach them Zakat, don't teach them any other things. Let them first absorb Tawheed. Let them understand Tawheed because who does not understand Tawheed will pray for Allah when you teach him. They will pray for Allah, but they will pray for other than Allah. That is what most of the Muslims doing today. They are praying for Allah. When, when, when the Adhan calls, they go to the masjid. I saw them. I saw them in India, in uh, Pakistan, in uh, uh, Sri Lanka, in Nepal, in Bangladesh, in, uh, in, 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 in Gambia, in Ghana and Ivory Coast and Senegal and uh, uh, Uganda and Tanzania and Kenya, all these countries which I visited, I saw the Muslims there. When the Adhan is called, they go to the masjid. But what happened later? They go to the grave and ask the grave. Have they understand who has the right to, to be worshipped? No. They claim, but they don't. They don't. So my brothers and sisters, we have to understand this. We have to seek knowledge. And then he said, and yet Allah, the most high, has favored us with this, with his book. His book, book, it is book. When, when we say book, this refers to what? Reflects what? Resembles what? Knowledge. Book means knowledge. Book means knowledge. That's why Allah Ta'ala said, knowledge. And he teaches them. You teach knowledge. So you have to seek the knowledge. And when you go to the, to the Quran, most of it, the knowledge, in, uh, the, the knowledge in most of the Quran is related to the right of Allah. Tawheed and Aqeedah. That is what we need to understand and learn and focus on. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, in, in Surah, Surah Al-Nahl, uh, Ayah uh, 89, there Allah ta'ala, uh, there Allah ta'ala said, and as in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 89, uh, he said, Tibiyanan uh, likulli shay'in wa hudan wa rahmatan وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ See? So Allah Ta'ala said what? An tibyan, explanation of everything and a guidance and a mercy and glad tidings for whom? For the Muslims, if you are a true Muslim and you have sincerity, 
then the, the Quran will increase you in knowledge. If you have understanding and you need to seek the knowledge of it, it does not mean that you go and read Quran and that's it. No, it means you go and sit in the circles of knowledge. As, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Look at that. There will be no group of people who gather in a, in a house of Allah, residing the uh, book of Allah and learning it, studying what is in it. The aqidah, of course, of the Tawheed. Then he, uh, he said, Naam. So, no person of falsehood comes with an argument except that the Quran contains that which will demolish it and explain its uh, fatality. Just as Allah, the Most High, said or stated as in Surah Al Furqan, Ayah 33, there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. In that ayah, uh, in Surah Al-Furqan, he said, وَلَا يَأْتُونَكَ, بالباط, uh, ولا يأتونك بمثل إلا جئناك بالحق وأحسن تفسيرا. إلا جئناك بالحق وأحسن تفسيرا. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, and they do not bring you any example except that we reveal to you the truth against that example of theirs and the bitter explanation of it. Where in the Quran, but not yani, without learning the, 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 how the Sahaba understood it. Sahaba already exposed their understandings like Ibn Abbas, Ibn uh, Mas'ud, Ibn Umar and all others, when you go to the books of Tafsir, like Tafsir al-Tabari, Tafsir ibn Kathir, Tafsir al-Qurtubi, Tafsir uh, ibn al-Qayyim, Tafsir al-Sadi, many, many Tafsirs, you will see them uh, yani, um, reporting from the Sahaba what this ayah mean, what this word mean, and like that. So that is what we need to do and learn, my brothers and sisters. So he said, so uh, some of the people of Tafsir stated, this ayah is general, uh, encompassing every proof which the people of falsehood bring up until the day of judgment. And, and I will uh, mention to you, here we stop, inshallah, to continue in our next uh, session next week, next uh, Wednesday, uh, what about uh, yani, uh, the Sheikh is going to uh, tell us as he said, والله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته